my name is Esther and I work as a developer advocate at Chakra UI. So here's a brief overview of what we'll be looking at in today's talk. Content modeling is a way of structuring and identifying the kind of content that is related to your website or your brand, identifying their attributes or the elements, and then the relationship between these content types. Content modeling helps you to create reusable content. So you're not just creating content for various channels, but you're creating one single source of truth for all the channels that will be serviced on various platforms. There are three steps to creating an effective content model. The first is to review your current content. This is where you sit down with the stakeholders and everyone involved in the content workflow, be the developers, designers, content creators. Find out the kind of content that you're currently creating and even the kind of content you need. The second step is to determine the content types and the fields. This will help you to optimally um, create content that is reusable and flexible. And then the final step is to define the content relationship. Decide how each of these content types are related together. Is it a many to many? Is it a many to one? Or what kind of relationships do they share? When you've completed all of these three steps, you can then be sure that you are on your way to creating an effective content model. In order for us to properly visualizes and move from theory to practical. This site, Best of Fails GS, is going to help us to have a practical and visual insight into content modeling before we go ahead to build it out into traffic. Best of Fails is a compilation of the best projects made with Fails GS. And so we want to identify the content types. Because it's a compilation of projects, then you can identify that there will definitely be a project content type. So this is an example of a project, or this is really a project rather. These are the fields that are associated with the project. It has a title, it has a short description that shows up in the preview. There's a longer description that tells you more details of the project. There's also a URL. And I would like to point it out to you that there's a creator here. And instead of putting this creator in the project, project um, content type, I would like us to separate this creator into a content type of its own. So now we've been able to identify two content types on this site, been able to identify the project content type and even the creator content type. So the last content type I want to show you here is the category content type. So we can see that each project has a category. For this typing kit project, there's an all projects category and there's a web app category. So let's go into this category. So there's a title field for the category content. There's also a description and there are various projects that can be associated with a category. So now that we've been able to um, itemize and map all the kind of contents, their types and the fields, as well as the relationship between them, let's go into our slides to see how you know this model or this content is modeled. So we have three different content types. We have the creator category and project content type. We've also been able to identify the entities or the fields under each of these content types. For example, the creator content type has a name and a Twitter handle. Let's go into the relationship between each of these content types. Between creator and project, we can see there's a one-to-many relationship, meaning that a creator can have more than one project. And between category and project, there's a many-to-many -many relationship, meaning that a project can be referenced in one or many categories and vice versa. Now that we have all of this understood, we want to go ahead to build out this content model in Strapi. To put Strapi, Strapi project, run the command npx create Strapi app, my project, or the title of your project. One npm one develop to get it started in local. So let's go into Strapi to build out this content model. So we just go into Strapi. Now that we've started Strapi in local, this is what you would see. On the left panel is where you see the content type builder. This is where you want to focus on because the content type builder is really what makes you build out models for your content. And then the kind of content we'll be building is a collection type. In Strapi, a collection type is really a kind of content type that accommodates many entities or many fields. Similar to how we saw um, in the content model in our slides, each content type has multiple content fields. So this is what we'll be using. So starting with, so we'll be starting with our creator content type. 
So let's just create a new content type and title it creator. For the purpose of this demo, I'll be turning off publishing so that every content I put will automatically be published and I will need to go through the you know, extra step of saving before publishing. So I'm just going to turn this off for the purpose of this demo. Let's quickly reference our slide. Creator has a name and a Twitter handle, which is what we want to put in. So we'll be using our text field, which will have a name, it's a short text, and then advanced settings because we want this to be unique and a required field in the API. So we're definitely going to check all of this and finish. And then we add a final title, which is the Twitter handle. And then we won't make it required because not every creator will definitely have a Twitter handle, but we'll make it a unique field and then we'll finish. So once this is completed, we've built out our creator content type. The next we want to do is the project content type. So the project content type, let's quickly have a sneak peek of what we want to model. So let's go ahead to build that out. It has a title has a short description, has a long description, has an image. So for image, we'll be picking the media field. We need a URL. So we'll be adding another field, which is the creator. Remember that uh, in our model, a project can have one creator. That is between creator and project is a one-to-many relationship. So we want to build that out. We select relation as our field type, right? Project has one creator correct and then we finish and we save this let's go ahead to build out the last content type which is category so we've been able to identify that between project and category it's a many-to-many -many relationship so we pick relation as the field and select this which shows categories has okay so instead of creator it should be project rather cool so categories has and belongs to many projects and then we finish and we save cool so right now we can see there's a relationship between projects and category and if you go back to projects you see that that relationship has been put into projects so what we've just done now is we've completed the model for each of our content type which is the creator the project and the category content type so right now we want to go ahead to actually build out the contents using our content manager here and start creating new entries for each of these content types. So let's start with creator. Our uh, best of Vels.js is going to help us in doing lots of this. So now I've gone ahead to add five different creators from the site, best of Vels, and this is what we have here. So now we want to go ahead to populate our project content type. So let's create a new entry together. Short description, Vels IDE. long description so right now i've gone to add four different projects into our project content type so what we want to do finally is to create a is to populate our category content type to the actual content so go into category and create a new entry so let's review um the best of field sites this is the category called all projects so I'm just going to copy the title here so I can put it in. This is the title. And then let's go ahead to grab the description as well. And this way we can just select all the projects that are associated with all projects category, which is really everything, right? That's why I selected everything and then I save. Now that you've completed your content modeling in Strapi, you need to consume this API on the front end. To make an API call, you need to first activate the permission settings in Strapi. To do that, go to settings here and then public. You need to edit the public permissions. You can then run an API call on that endpoint. So the next thing I want to show you is how content fosters collaboration between designers, developers, and even content creators. So with this image, you can see that content modeling is at the center of these three groups of people. 
as a UI designer with an effective content modeling setup, you already know the kind of design you should create across every kind of content. As a developer also, you know the API endpoints and how the front end should be built. And as a content creator, you have insights into the type of content you need to start creating. Here are a few resources that can help you also get started. Thank you for listening to my talk.